Jim here and welcome back to the channel. Always striving to create interesting and informative digital content for the thinking diver. Today is something I'd like to do a little bit more of in the future, looking at other content and reviewing it. Actually, I have a shark video coming up next. It's a uh, it's a biologist reacting to shark sci-fi films. That's gonna be a fun one. But this one is reacting to uh, Cluster Fugazi. And not to be disrespectful, Again, like with other analyses I've had, very respectful of people who post um, disaster videos of scuba diving incidents for us to uh, look at. Let's get right into it. First, this one happens in South Africa, so major envy from me. Diving in South Africa it must be amazing. Uh, actually, it's quite a long time ago, 2012. Uh, looks like an advanced class, and I have my suspicions about this advanced class, but let's have a look. So, I don't know, it's four or five people. I've only watched it a few times, and uh, so we'll, we'll have a look as it, un as it unravels. So it's going through, it's talking about, uh, yeah, 2012. Man, they're diving in. Turn this down, actually. All right, so they're on an advanced course. And I think what's going on here is they have two incidents on this. One person panics and another and almost dies, and another person uh, has their eardrum blow out apparently. So this person, Wasim, panics, and you'll see in a moment. That's the person with a lot of yellow weights, and Doug. The guy who bursts his eardrum. I think that is the, the person filming. And then there's a woman, Nikki, who really does, does a good job to keep everything calm. All right, so they're descending here. And one thing, it's not really clear. Let me pause this. It's not really clear right away. I could have this wrong, but who, who's, who's buddy? And very often, going down, coming up, that's the time that people lose buddies, right? In the water column, when someone's two meters above you, three meters above you, you don't know where they are. So if someone, especially on the descent, someone's having ear trouble, your buddy is delayed. If you're not looking up, you go all the way to the bottom. You had no idea that buddy was delayed. Let's check it out. So her eardrum, she's gone. So already, how, how far am I? We're a minute, a minute and 20 seconds, a minute and a half into this dive. And this poor person says that their eardrum burst already. So as you know, I don't have to tell you, um, you know, you're feeling a little bit of pain. If you feel pain, you're already too late on the equalization, right? Um, so going down now, I have terrible ears, actually. I have I had chronic ear infections as a child. I have terrible ears. My eustachian tubes are terrible. I have to very, very solidly uh, Valsalva all the way down, like every few meters. Um, so I'm, I'm like the worst case scenario. Other people, they can swallow. Tips that I can give you, if, if you're having difficulty, of course, you stop, go up a few meters. Definitely contact your buddy. Go up a few meters, try it again. If it still doesn't work, go up again for a few meters. Also, I find that uh, although we usually teach people to be in a nice uh, uh, horizontal trim, it's actually much harder to, uh, for people who have a tough time in horizontal trim, it's tougher to equalize your ears. So it's best to get vertical. Also, craning your neck to side to side while you're Valsalva, that stretches the eustachian tube and also helps people. So those are all the hints I have for the worst case scenario, get vertical. Valsalva and moving your head side to side. Let's see how but her poor eardrum is already gone, so that is the worst case scenario. Oh, it's a he, sorry. And uh, you know, the cold air gets into your ears, it's gonna play um, terrible tricks with your balance. Let's see. Yeah, vertigo spinning. I don't know where this person's buddy is or if that buddy's aware. Also, I hear a squeaking. I don't know what that is. This regulator, I suppose. 
Occasionally I have regulators squeak like that on the surface, um, but I, I've never heard that in the water. Look at that, no idea what was up or down. This must have been absolutely terrible. I would have been vomiting my guts out because I'm really bad uh, with seasickness. It Once I get seasick or roller coaster or that sort of thing, I'm really bad. This would have been a nightmare for me. Focus on the diver. This person did a really good job to keep themselves together. So now my, my one observation, and again, I salute anybody who puts a video up for public criticism. I, I, I salute. Um, but one thing I'm observing here, and I'm going to mention this later on, is these are advanced open water candidates. We don't know how far along in their advanced. But immediately what I'm seeing on the surface of this wreck is not advanced candidate finning behavior. I see a lot of hand movement. Um, I see a lot of fin kicking that seems to be more like the, the bicycle kicking. It's not a very effective propulsion. propulsion. Uh, if it were me, I'm usually a little bit strict with my advanced candidates because I don't want to take someone deep and then have a cluster fugazi like this is going to turn into. So my suspicion is these folks, at least some of these folks, might not have been prepared for an advanced class. I don't know what that equipment was there. See a lot of hand movement. Now, um, I forget the, the fellow's name uh, who, who's in front of us. He, he's the fellow who's going to have uh, some panic later on. Now, one thing you'll notice is he is not anywhere near neutrally buoyant. Now, I don't know if he has too much weight on, but when you have a look at his belt, it appears to be a lot of weight and of weight some weights I've never seen before. I mean, it looks actually like a like a suicide bomber belt there. But uh, I don't know if this is too much weight from him. It might be from his behavior. He does definitely does not have enough air in his BC. It may also be too much weight for him. It, it looks like too much weight, but I don't know what those weights are. A lot of hand movement. A lot of hand movement. All right, so there's a signal to the buddy. So this person, Wasim, is the filmer's buddy, the buddy who burst an eardrum. Uh, problem, let's go up a little. Wow, I'd be going up a lot. And bam, worst case scenario, exactly why we don't want divers using their hands this person using his hands to maintain his buoyancy knocks the regulator out of the mouth of someone who has terrible vertigo already. This must have been an absolutely amazing situation for this person to remain calm. Recovering the reg, I suppose. Now look at that diver, just totally heavy. I'm not sure whether he's trying to go up or down. He's probably losing control. Yeah, he's just falling. I'm not sure what's going on here. Instructor. All right, so probably the instructor is trying to figure out what's going on, figures out something's going on. In the meantime, the buddy, apparently Wasim, is, appears to be losing his buoyancy down to the wreck. Um, I don't know what the depth is here. Probably, I, I think, uh, in the 20s or perhaps near 30, 100 feet. Now, here we are on the wreck again. We've gone back down. Okay, so some folks are all the way down to the to the deck. Ah, okay, so here comes the person who's gonna maybe start panicking. Wasim again, the person with all those yellow weights. 
you know, the buddy is coming and saying, hey, something's wrong here. Leaving her buddy who's panicking at the bottom. Oh. Instructor says, let's thumb it. And the instructor doesn't know this person's panicking yet. Oh my gosh, yeah, look at that. That kicking. Oh boy, grabs for a second stage. The kick is out of control. Drops his regulator. Now look at this. It says he doesn't remember this soon after he blacked out completely. This, I really feel for this instructor. Um, I, I think he, he might, he might have created a, some of this himself by bringing people too soon into a, a deep situation where maybe, maybe at least one of these people wasn't prepared. Uh, maybe one of these people is overweighted. I don't know. And, uh, but holy cow, I really feel for this guy. He's got someone who has a broken eardrum and is probably on the verge of panic. And another diver who is now just losing his cookies. This is like the worst cluster fugazi I can even imagine. So the buddy's keeping it together. She's the one who air shared. Getting control of the diver, they're going up in control. Look at all those weights on that belt. Oh, she's got her regulator back now. Instructor takes over the air share, perhaps. All right, so there has two buddy pairs going up. At one point, uh, so at one point that uh, panic diver tried to make a break for the service. Instructor caught his fin. That means the guy got quite a bit above him. Um, probably, probably would have been wise to really. Obviously, this guy's totally panicked. Probably a good idea to really keep uh, contact with this fella. Someone like that spits their reg from deep and goes to the surface. That's a lung explosion just waiting to happen. Um, probably with this diver would have been a good idea to be on the line as well. If I were the instructor, I would have used all the help I can get. We don't know what's going on. Here we go. We're at the surface. Well, that instructor must feel so happy to be at the surface. So this is the eardrum explosion person coming over the side. Now watch this. When this this was the panic diver coming up the side. Watch this. He just spits water out of his lungs. Watch this. Bam. Purges water out of his lungs. And remember, this guy's blacked out. He doesn't really remember any of this, although he was moving and whatnot. He just falls, collapses on the deck. There's the weight belt there you can see with all the, the yellow weights on it. Yeah, so look at this. So they didn't give he doesn't remember the dive. He didn't they didn't give him ox oxygen. Now one thing, you know, if you're a rescue diver or above, you know, right, any emergency you're gonna at least give the person oxygen. And especially this guy came up and purged water out of his mouth clearly that was more water than would fit just in his mouth he must have had water in his lungs i guess so and he collapsed right the, the least that they should do definitely is give him some oxygen uh as well if he did have any water in his lungs you'd start to worry about secondary drowning as well so this person is a watch for 24 hours at least definitely go to a hospital and and have a look i don't yeah you know, i don't know if that's what they did or not didn't remember the dive. That is incredible. All right. All righty. So yeah, kudos to uh, the person who made this this video. Um, you know, any time that you put something up to be critiqued. Oh, there's the the panic diver standing. 
Um, yeah, there's a lot to learn from this dive, and thank you very much. Uh, I was lucky to be around, yeah, and diving today. Now look at this. We all continued. We all continue to take courses and are now soon going to be dive masters, but nothing you can learn from a textbook. Here's my guess. I'm guessing that this was a zero to hero program. Could be wrong, but. Um, you know, the kind of thing where you go and you, you might be certified or not, and they're just going to take you right to dive master or more commonly all the way to instructor. So this might have been a situation like that also might explain why maybe one or more of these people might not have been prepared uh, for how, how quickly they were being pushed along in that program. <laughs> but uh, that guy is lucky to be alive. Can you imagine? Um, and uh, hats off to the, the woman who was one of the buddies. I don't think she was a dive master. I'm, I'm assuming she was one of the students. Cool head, uh, way to go on that one. Uh, is there anything else here? No. All righty. Yeah, that's the end of that one. Yeah, so holy cow. Huge uh, hats off to uh, to that to that woman who remained cool and the diving instructor. He might have had some some culpability in this, but I can tell you from experience, it is a day like this. It'll just make you want to quit instructing forever, maybe even diving. So anyway, well, I hope you got something out of that. I sure did, and uh, so we're going to be doing this once in a while in the future. Uh, thanks a lot. Any comments you want to add up, things that I might have missed, uh, things that you want to add to the mix, please go ahead, put it down in the comments. As always, uh, thanks again. Oh, we have uh, the channel is now on Patreon. Anybody who wants to support the channel with Patreon, more than grateful. We will be having some live streams in the future. Hopefully take advantage of those. Thanks again. And as always, see you on the beach. <laughs>